Number one. Halloween is my favorite holiday. Is, not was. Despite the events that unfolded one crisp Hallow's Eve when I was about 16, at the time I lived with my parents, my younger brother, older stepbrother, and my cousin in a big but old house that sat in a cul-de-sac close to Main Street. Behind it ran an alleyway flanked by apartments, and it had a huge yard that my basement bedroom looked out onto. We lived in a small town, crime seemed minimal in the area, and I made my way out that Halloween night to make the most of the best day of the year. It wasn't just what happened that night, though. It was, of course, what came after, and one small incident that came before. A few days before Halloween, my stepbrother and cousin arrived home to discover a pickup truck full of dudes taking photos of our house. It was weird, but when approached, the men seemed friendly and complimented our Halloween setup. It was pretty great, that's true. The men sped off without incident and were quickly forgotten. My stepbrother and cousin re-entered the story Halloween night, the big event itself, at about 3 a.m. Both had been out drinking with their friends, and as such, both had left their respective vehicles and braved the icy walk home on their own. My cousin arrived home first, but he couldn't seem to get his key in the lock and just sat on the porch bench and waited for my stepbrother to show up. He did about a half an hour later. After having a bit of a laugh at my cousin for being an uncoordinated goober, he went to unlock the door himself and... No luck. So, they bit the bullet and called my mom, waking her up to let them in. She was, of course, unimpressed to be opening the door for a pair of drunk idiots at this time of night and didn't buy their story about the wonky lock. They insisted, though, and to shut them up, she finally relented and tried her key. She, too, could not get her key in the lock. Annoyed, tired, and now just confused, she wrote it off as a problem for tomorrow, and the three of them would hit their respective hay. One other person arrived home late that night. Me. Though I arrived much earlier than those two and was in bed by about midnight. I woke up close to 1am. Still tired, all I could feel was anxiety and I didn't know why. At first I tried to tell myself that I'd just gotten a bit too into the holiday spirit and had psyched myself out. But then I noticed a shadow. It was a perfectly man-shaped and cast upon my window. I turned on my bedside lamp, blinked, and it was gone. It wasn't unusual, mind you, to see the shadows of people harmlessly walking through the alley, and I told myself that's all there was to it. And then there was what happened after. I came home from school the next day. My parents were there, and so was the locksmith, and so were the police. My parents were there because, well, that's where they lived. The locksmith was there because my mom had called him, as the confusion over the broken lock persisted. The cops were there because of the locksmith, and my parents had called them when the locksmith proceeded to pull the tip of a knife out of our lock. I was relieved to see that that's where the knife tip had ended up, though, as they discovered two of our window screens had been slashed. One on our garage, and one on my bedroom window. Number 2 this incident happened to me last year on Halloween. My little brother and I were home alone since our parents had gone out to a Halloween party. They had tasked us with handing out candy to the trick-or-treaters. This bummed my brother and I out because we had made plans to go trick-or-treating with a few friends. Our parents told us that we were too old to still be trick-or-treating and that we could instead invite our friends over to the house and hang out there. My friends declined my invitation to come over because they still wanted to go trick-or-treating. So that left me home alone with my brother handing out candy. A lot of people stopped by our house, and by 10 o'clock that night, almost all the candy was gone. My brother and I decided that we'd eat the rest. We were sitting on the couch, watching a scary movie, stuffing ourselves with candy when there was a knock at the door. I stormed off the couch, wondering who the hell could be knocking on our door this late. I assumed that it was just some late night trick-or-treaters. Even if that was the case, I had turned the porch light and Halloween decorations off, which should have been a dead giveaway that we were out of candy or that we weren't home. So I assumed it was my parents. Being cautious, I looked through the peephole and saw a suspicious man standing on our front porch. 
He was wearing a black hoodie with the hood over his head, which made it difficult to see his face. The only detail of his face I could spot was that he had a beard and dry, crusty lips. There was no way that this guy was a trick-or-treater because he wasn't wearing a costume and he was far too old to be trick-or-treating alone. His hands were stuffed in the front pocket of his hoodie and he also looked very thin. Every single red flag went off in my head about this guy. There was no way in hell I was going to open the door. Still looking through the peephole, I watched as he knocked on the door again. He seemed desperate for us to open the door and was shaking a bit. It wasn't cold outside, definitely not cold enough for someone to be trembling. He was giving me a bad vibe, and I wanted to get rid of him as soon as possible. We're out of candy, I shouted to him. I watched the smile spread across his face. It wasn't a friendly smile either. Are you alone in there? The man asked, almost in a mocking voice. His voice was raspy and dry. Should I call the police? My little brother asked me quietly, gripping his cell phone. The man let out a low grumble and said, Sounds like you're not alone in there. I continued to watch him through the peephole. His hands were still wedged tightly in his pocket and he was still shaking a bit. I began to wonder if he was armed. I decided to take action and spoke to him in the most intimidating voice I could. Get the fuck away from my house or I'll call the police, I shouted. His smile faded and he bared his teeth. His teeth were piss yellow and I concluded that he was probably some homeless crackhead. He had a look of fury plastered on his face. Fortunately, he left without trying to break in, probably because he knew I wasn't fucking around with him. I didn't stop watching him through the peephole until I saw him completely off of our property. My brother and I breathed a sigh of relief and decided not to call the police. My brother and I were a bit paranoid after this and watched TV until our parents came home. We didn't tell them about the man since he hadn't really tried to harm us. Now that I think back to this, I wish we would have called the police because maybe we could have been able to stop a murder. You see, the next day we found out that the elderly woman who lived a few houses down from us had been brutally murdered. Her neighbor found her lying on her front porch covered in blood. She had been stabbed multiple times in the chest and neck. My brother and I immediately knew who had done it and we told the police what we knew. They couldn't do much from the information we had given him since we hadn't seen many details of his face. They went on the hunt for the man but never caught him. I blame myself for that poor lady's murder because I could have prevented it from happening by just calling the police. I think the most disturbing thing of all is the fact that he didn't take anything from the old lady's house. Her house had been left untouched, but he could have gone in and taken what he wanted since her door was wide open. This means that he only wanted to kill. That was his only intention. He didn't want money or jewelry. He only had the urge to murder. So, creepy crackhead Halloween slasher? Let's not meet. Number 3 this happened the night before Halloween back in 2010. At the time, I was a freshman in college and living on campus. This has significance later on. That year, the 31st fell on a Monday, so student festivities were on the Sunday before. During the afternoon around 7, I went outside to play on a soccer field near my place and I noticed an SUV driving by several times. I only noticed this vehicle because we kicked the ball over the fence several times and that car was present at least twice while we were climbing the fence to get the ball. I didn't think much of it and proceeded to go to a party later that night. My girlfriend, a few friends and I left around 9.30 and we noticed a helicopter in the sky with a bright floodlight attached to it, seemingly scanning the area. We proceeded to the party and didn't fret over it. The party was on the other side of campus, so we missed all the sirens and flashing lights racing up and down the street. I'm getting ahead of myself here, so let me go back. We got back from the party around 11pm and I immediately noticed that not only was the first helicopter still in the air around my on-campus apartment, there was a steady stream of police cars, ambulance, and fire trucks driving up and down the street nearby. However, none of them had their lights nor sirens on, so I wasn't alarmed. The next day, the internet informed me that an SUV was found ablaze in the parking lot with a woman's body inside. This happened about half a mile to three-fourths of a mile from where I lived. 
I guess during the party, the area was crawling with police and other authorities trying to look for clues. My roommate later told me that there were non-stop sirens for a good 20 minutes after I left the party. In the next few weeks, more info surfaced, saying that a man killed his wife and tried to burn the body. He broke her neck as well as bludgeoned her body. If the news articles that are in the description are to be trusted, slight discrepancies with timing, the killer was lighting his wife's body on the fire during the same time I was getting dressed up in my Woody costume for a party. It wasn't until a few weeks later that while I was playing soccer, someone was driving within 20 yards of me with a corpse in the car especially since it was on campus of a seemingly secure university in a very safe city. Number 4 Back in 2008, uh, I think, I had graduated high school but was still living in my parents' house along with my younger brother and sister, who at the time were in high school and junior high respectively. It was Halloween Eve, meaning the next day was Halloween, and we were all asleep in our beds. Now, I have to tell you that we all lived on a nice-ish street. We lived in a town known for gangs and drug deals and random crazy weirdos. It was a little scary to hear gunshots and police sirens in the too-close-for-comfort distance every night. But hey, it was home. Anywho, at about 4am, I woke up to what sounded like a gunshot on our front porch, followed by shouting and violent pounding on our front door. I, being curious but also scared out of my mind, creeped up to the second floor window and peered out at the front yard in an unobstructed view of the porch. This was all I could see, and aside from hearing a regular stream of cursing and more pounding on the door, I had no clue what was going on for what seemed like hours, but in reality it was probably only about 20 minutes. Finally, my brother came bursting into my room to ask if I was okay. I told him yes, but what the hell was going on? And he told me this. Some weirdo was at our front door. He had knocked on, aka tried to break down our door, and my dad heard and went to go see what was happening. He peered through the glass and saw a man on our porch, to which he asked what was wrong, without opening or unlocking the door. The man answered, They're after me! Repeatedly while glancing back behind him. My dad, seeing that there was no one behind him on a dimly lit street, asked if he would like to use our phone. He said yes, and my dad grabbed our house phone and handed it to him through the doorway he had cracked open. The man tried to push his way in, but thankfully my dad stopped him and shut and locked the door. He then proceeded to call the police on the phone the man had opted not to take. This was the story up to the point where my brother came back to check up on me. At that point, the man had started screaming profanities, yanking the door handle back and forth violently, and pounding on the walls and then I heard the shatter of glass. The man had taken a chair from our front porch and thrown it to the front window, which led to my parents' bedroom. I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure I was bawling at this point, knowing for sure that he was now in our house. And remember, I woke up to what I thought was a gunshot. I thought about how he was going to kill my parents first, and then run up the stairs and kill me and my brother. My mind raced at all the horrible things that could be happening downstairs when, amazingly, the police pulled up right at that moment. They immediately came into the house and detained the man. Apparently, he had climbed through the window, cutting himself on the glass, and crawled on all fours through my parents' bedroom and through the kitchen, finally ending up on our living room floor, where he just laid down and bled all over our carpet. He didn't have any weapons on him, despite my original theory of him having a gun. He was apprehended before he did anything to anyone in my family, thankfully. We think he was just some druggie who was hallucinating that someone was chasing him. No charges were filed and we never saw the man again. After the police and ambulance left, my dad cleaned up what he could of the bloody mess and we all went to bed. Unfortunately, all of us forgot about my little sister who was in a downstairs bedroom in the back of the house. No one had gone to check on her and no one told her what would happen after it was all over so she spent the entire night cowering under the blankets thinking something could be going on. We should have apologized to her. So that's my story. Even though it was the most frightening experience of my life thus far, at least something good came of it. Since he bled all over our carpets, our insurance paid for new carpet, which we desperately needed, and it was enough to carpet some of our rooms, way more than we actually ruined. So, there's that. Number 5 
This happened about five years ago on Halloween, and surprisingly enough, didn't really have a lot to do with the holiday itself. This particular year, some friends and I were invited to a party, so we planned to go into the city for dinner and then to the party. I'm not sure where the idea came from, but of the five men, three decided to dress in drag for our costumes. Two of us were not pretty at all, and one of us looked like a hot girl. I was one of the ugly girls. We took the train to the nearest stop to my friend's party, which we discovered was in a pretty notoriously bad part of town. Needless to say, there was a lot of discomfort while we got awkward stares and a couple of creepy catcalls. We made it no problem and went to the party which generally sucked. We only wound up staying about 40 minutes before taking off. We were kind of on edge anyways from the whole scenario, but on the way back we had to walk past an older gentleman and a dog on either side of the sidewalk. He was pretty average, like a stock photo you'd use to describe someone's grandfather. He glared at us as we passed by and we avoided eye contact. As I passed, however, the dog jumped and barked at me. The man yelled, Hey! at us loudly. And we just kept walking. So I'm not sure if it was that he thought I kicked the dog or if it had to do with my taste in women's clothing or something else. But as we walked back to the train, the older gentleman, Sans Dog, began following us. None of us really noticed it until he overtook two of our friends at the back. As we walked, it was a group of five of us at the front, with me in the back, and then a good ten feet between me and the last two members of our group. I wasn't aware, but he continued behind me and slowly started to close the distance between himself and I. By the time we were about a block away from the train station, he was right behind me. At that point, my friend called out to us. Guys, she said with a little panic in her voice. As we turned, the guy stopped suddenly with his arms up, as though he was surprised. He changed direction immediately and walked quickly down a side street. My friend at the back told me that she and her boyfriend in the back were having that horror movie moment, when you're so scared that it's hard to speak. She told me that when she passed them, he was focused on me, and once he was right behind me, he matched my pace rather than trying to pass by. She finally reached out to us out of terror because he was reaching into his coat pocket, and I still shiver thinking about that. Number 6 Halloween, unfortunately, has never been a big deal out here in Scotland, and that's always bummed me out because I love Halloween. But after this year, I'll be happy never celebrating it again. My street and the next street over have a lot of young kids who go out trick-or-treating, so while I was out shopping all day with my mom, we decided to pick up some sweets in case anyone came to our door. I had plans to go to the movies to see Ouija with my boyfriend, so when I got home, I was getting myself ready to go out and my mom was putting the shopping away. So when the first load of the kids came to the door, I was the one who had to answer it. There were children from our street, the next one over, and some I couldn't recognize. And there was also an adult at the end of the path. I guess it was either a father or an older brother by their side. They were dressed in all black and had some sort of mask covering their face, but it wasn't anything I recognized from a movie or anything. Anyway, they all told me their jokes and I gave them their treats and they made their way back down to the path and onto the next house. I was about to close the door when I noticed that the guy with the kids was still standing at the end of my path. He hadn't noticed and he wasn't watching the children either. He was looking right at me and my skin started to crawl and I realized he was just staring at me. I backed away slowly into the house and watched as he raised his hand and slowly waved at me. I was about to call out to him when my mom came to the door to make sure that I was alright, and he took off in the opposite way from the children. He hadn't been with them at all, and he left as soon as he realized that I wasn't home alone. I was completely freaked out, and I told my boyfriend all about it when he came to the house to pick me up, but I quickly forgot all about it when we were watching the movie. When I finally got home, it was getting really late, and trick-or-treating was well and truly over around here. When I got inside, my mom was just getting ready to take the dogs out for a walk so that they could do their last minute business and that they would meet my dad on his way home from work, so I was going to be home alone. After my horrible encounter that I posted on here a while ago, I don't really like being home alone, but it's worse on Halloween, and it always has been. 
I was home alone and I grabbed some snacks and went up to my bedroom and onto my computer so that I could do some writing, scroll through Tumblr and then listen to music. After my first creepy encounter with the guys coming into my house and into my backyard, my dad bought a motion censored light and attached it to the wall of our house right outside my window. Normally it will go off whenever a cat walks along our fence, but it will usually go off after a couple of minutes. I always know when the light has come on because it lights up my whole room given where it's placed, and while I was sitting at my computer the light came on. I ignored it at first because I knew it would go off soon, but five minutes passed and it still hadn't gone off. So I opened my blinds to have a look outside and see what's going on. My stomach almost fell out of my ass when I looked out and saw the creep from hours before sitting on the fence waving at my window to keep the light on. His waving slowed down suddenly when he spotted me and it was all seriously creepy again and I didn't know what to do. I just got flashbacks from before. Luckily I heard the front door open and my parents coming into the house with the dogs. So I rushed down the stairs and started screaming at them to get the guy on the fence. My dad didn't question me. He just took the dogs and rushed through the house, threw the back door open and ran outside and then I heard him shouting, Get the fuck out of here you creep! I'm going to call the police! My dad scared him off, but I convinced him not to call the police because I didn't want to relive the whole thing again. I just wanted to go to sleep and forget about the whole night. So to the creepy guy in the mask waving at me at the end of my path and sitting on my fence, let's not meet. Number 7 When I was 12 years old and my younger sister was 10, my dad was in the military and we lived on a military base. It was around Halloween and I was walking to my boyfriend's house to skateboard, i.e. kickflip ad nauseum in his parking lot to think we were Tony Hawk. Between two of the buildings, I spotted a creeper in a Michael Myers mask, who receded into the shadows when I spotted him. It being right around Halloween, I was like, eh, whatever. I saw him again the next morning, waiting for the bus, but the other kids thought I was trying to scare them because he'd snuck behind a building and no one else saw him. I was finding it kind of sketchy at this point, but didn't really press the issue. On Halloween, my sister and I went trick-or-treating and saw this guy dressed up as Michael Myers following us between the houses all night. We never acknowledged him and avoided the shadows. That night, my sister came to my room and said, Hey, we have a problem. I went into her room and the Michael Myers creep was standing in our backyard staring up at her window. We got our parents, but he jetted when they got there. A week later, someone tried to kidnap my sister while she was walking to school. No idea if it was related, but God, it was unsettling. Number 8 I have more under my belt, but here's a memory from when I was younger. My dad was the coolest guy on the block, probably because he was the one of three black dads who lived in our town. The population is around 98% Caucasian, and that's not an exaggeration. He was a state police officer, intimidating, wore Oakleys before the hipsters, and he was a generally rough-sounding person. Damn, do I miss him. But the one thing he feared the most was Halloween. He would tell my sister and I stories at night about his life when he was in high school in the slum in New Jersey, that every Halloween, crazy things would happen. He may have been pulling our legs a bit, but we didn't care. When Halloween would roll around, he would take us out while my mom stayed home to trick or treat. One night in 5th grade, Lexi and I were dressed as a witch and 50s poodle skirt girl. Dad held our hands, walking to the last street when I realized I'd lost mom's scarf she'd let me borrow. She loved that thing, so we walked all the way back towards the dark corner of our street. It's by the woods and a small stream, but when it's dark, you can't see anything. Dad said he'd seen something and walked towards it. When he got there, he started slowing down. He was staring at something in the dark that we could not see. Lexi called out to him if he had found Mom's scarf. He told her to be quiet and started crouching down, looking into the distance. For several moments, we stood there, waiting. I could make out the scarf above his head, tied to a branch. He grabbed the scarf tied, still staring in the dark, and started backing away. Then Dad screamed and sort of shuffled backwards. It was a low, throaty scream like he was furious. He was swearing too, but I don't remember what. Whatever Dad had been staring at then bolted out of the trees and ran down the street opposite of where we lived. It was a little child, probably a boy, from his silhouette shape, 
in a black costume with skeleton bones on the front and a skull mask. When Lexi and I tried to go over there to see what had happened, Dad yelled for us to stay back. He got onto his ancient cell phone and called my mom to come and pick us up. The next call was to the local police. We left before we could see anything, but the next day my mom told us about the dead skinned animals that had been found. By the time us kids could go look, they taped off the place and had taken out the bloody animals, but there were stains on the pavement and the smell was pretty bad. The kids talked about it in school a little, and I was curious if they ever caught the boy. Nothing came out of the local papers though, and it was quickly forgotten. Eventually dad could have told me more, but it was the last Halloween we'd ever spend together. But I do remember mom and him arguing over the next couple of days over letting us go and trick or treating again. Number 9 The events happened in October of 2003, obviously since it was on Halloween. I was 10 years old in the 6th grade. Where I am from, the middle school gets out after the elementary school and the high schools. My friends and I knew that we would have to immediately start trick or treating if we wanted to get candy. Remember that Halloween of 2003 was on a Friday. This excited us. We could hit every house we wanted and didn't have to worry about school the next day. After school, our parents picked us up and drove us to our friend Alex's house. He lived on a road named South Herald. To the left of South Herald was an identical street named South Concord. At the end of one side of South Herald was a turn that brought you to South Concord. On the other side was a main road. Alec lived closer to the main road, so our plan was to start at his house, go to the main road, then turn up and go down Concord. After that, we'd go back down Harold and return to Alex's house. Okay, so we begin trick-or-treating. There was probably about 12 of us, but the notable ones were myself, Alec, Nate, and James. We had been acquiring a great deal of candy when we got to this fateful house. It wasn't unlike any other house two stories, a garage, front lawn, etc. However, there was a Michael Myers statue in the front lawn. We went up to the house, got candy, and then examined the statue. It was holding a knife. It was hunched over. James decided it'd be a good idea to kick it in the shin. Suddenly, the statue jumped and began holding its shin. We were frightened that the statue was actually a dude. I'm gonna fucking kill you, said the man. Obviously, plenty of people claim they want to kill someone and not really mean it. We just assumed that it was an idle threat and continued on our way. And like 8.30, it was pretty dark out. I lived up north at the time, and anyone who lives up there can agree that it gets dark pretty quickly. We were still collecting candy when Nate and I began discussing the science behind slasher films, like who gets offed first and whatnot. One of the people we were with, who was in the middle of the pack, dropped his bag. We all stopped and waited. Now the person had to turn around in order to pick up his bag, which he lifted up to his head and began to squint as if he was trying hard to see something. We all turned to see the man in the Michael Myers costume walking behind us. He was still holding onto the knife. When he noticed that we were looking at him, he quickened his pace. Being stupid preteens, we booked it. Looking over my shoulder, I realized he started running too. Fortunately for my slow ass, he was a decent length behind us. Our luck turned even more in our favor when a minivan stopped at the end of Concord. It was one of the people I was with's mother. We all piled in and quickly told us that someone was chasing us. She drove us back to Alec's house. What makes this even worse is that Alec and Nate told me that the man was still roaming the streets after we had all left. I don't think I really have felt so terrified. I honestly never have left the house on Halloween since. Now whether or not the knife was real or not is irrelevant. It's one of those things that I had no intention of knowing, just in case it was real and all. Again, this story pales in comparison to some other experiences here, and I'm really not much of a storyteller. Still, I hope you enjoy my misfortune. Number 10 I was an 18-year-old male, first semester in college. My first semester in college, I was the only one in my dorm that night, and it was Halloween. I was sitting watching horror movies alone when I heard the elevator chime. It was across the hall from my room. I got up and looked through the peephole, and the door opened, but there was no one there. I opened my door and poked my head out. 
I looked down the hall and there was a man standing at the other end, dressed in full black morph suit with black pants and a hoodie. He was holding a baseball bat, but with it being Halloween and all, I brushed it off and just shut my door. Moments later, I hear a loud banging sound. I jumped up and locked the door. I looked out the peephole right as the man took the baseball bat to my door. He kept hitting it with all his strength. I looked out the peephole right as the man took a baseball bat to my door. I grabbed my phone and called campus police, grabbed my hockey stick and backed up. The operator picked up and asked me what my emergency was. I frantically whispered to him that there was a man trying to break down my door. As I said that, the banging stopped. I heard the stairwell door slam against the wall as the man ran away. The operator sent an officer over to my dorm while another searched the campus. They didn't find him. <laughs>